we're out in the real world. Just coming for a little uh, pickup errand for Scott. <laughs> Thought I'd have a look while we're here. Haven't been in a total wine for months. Wonder if anything's changed. One of the problems for Deepa is not being able to lip read. So, got the phone in action. Oh, okay. Studio Phil here. Let's um, take that background down because, you know, do you want to listen to this? I don't think you do. The glass cabinet, Total Wine, it's always a bit of fun. I was a bit surprised to see McAllen number five still hanging out here. Um, not too bad a price. They do have some funny mixes in here. Like, I'm never quite sure if, I, if I'm seeing something good or not. They throw in some odd ones. I don't know. Kentucky Owl for 189. Ah, doesn't seem that good, does it? And what's that? I think that's just like, yeah, Hibiki Harmony. Okay, one per customer. Not exactly a glass cabinet whiskey, though, is it? Not like Dalmore in a mirrored box. Come on. <laughs> All right. Ladyburn 42. I probably wouldn't want to spend that much money on it, but at least it's a glass cabinet kind of a kind of a thing. Middleton Barry Crockett. Don't really know much about Scottish uh, <laughs> Irish whiskey. I should have watched more of Eric's. What? Hang on. 450 for a blue label? I oh, know it was a giant one. It must be. Yeah. Okay. 160 for the normal size. Fair enough. Oh, hey, that's not too bad a price, you know. It looks a bit faded, that bottle. I wonder if it's an old one. And Highland Park full volume, that's discontinued, isn't it? You know, isn't that the ex-bourbon? Pretty sure it is. Spirits Direct. I'm never quite convinced by Spirits Direct either. Um, it always it always seems like the prices are inflated on Spirits Direct. Okay, Lafroig 27. That is not going to be a cheap bottle anywhere. Although you do get the 10% sales on Spirits Direct, which can make things uh, more interesting. I presume Spirits Direct is a total wine associate of some kind. Now look at these ones. So these are all Dimensions independent bottler. But look at those prices. Yikes. Some pretty pricey stuff. Like that Brook Gladys, only a 15 year old. Why $330? Uh, Grangestone is a brand name which only shows up at Total Wine. As far as I can tell, I've never seen it anywhere else, but that was a 38 year old for $230. Was it a, was it a blended malt? I can't even remember. <laughs> Deep is finding more Craig Ellicky. Oh, good price on 13 actually, $50. Not bad at all. What else are we seeing? Glen Alicky 10, $70, pretty pricey, but people do seem to like that one. I think that's probably ex-bourbon as well, is it not? Like this uh, Abuna Alba, quite a bit more expensive at $100, but we did like that. It's currently uh, top shelf <laughs> on uh, our blind tasting, which is surprised us. Pretty funny. I've never had a Nadora from Glenlivet. $75 Oloroso or Peated there. A few more. They do have quite a few independent bottles. Look, there's a Cadenhead and a Thrusk. AD Rattray. They have them sort of dotted around. These Glenlivet Code and um, what was the other one? Enigma or <laughs> something like that. They've been hanging around for a while as well, haven't they? Good old Glen Farkless. It's always sort of bottom-ish shelf. Although, uh, you know, we don't get the 15-year in the US. The one which is a little higher ABV. Berry Brothers. Berry Brothers and Rudd. Very nice uh, visit if you're in London to go to their store. Taninic. Blair Athol. Oh yeah, those these are the ones we're picking up for Scott, so that's why there's nothing on the shelf. We're going to get those later. Still quite a few Glenronic 18s. I didn't get any out of the cans this time uh, to check. I was kind of tempted by that Deanston, although the price has gone up a little. 
that organic has been there for decades, I think. <laughs> well, at least a couple of years, I'm sure that has been on the shelf for a couple of years. Speaking of which, 2018 and 2019 classic cuts, not a bad price. These were, these were bottles that when they first came out, they had to put them back, you know, behind the counter to stop people buying them. But then here we are, you know, a year or two later, still up there. There's another Blair Athol. Look, even Old Malt Cask makes it to Total Wine every now and then. That is 120. Now, there's always taxes on top of these. Um, so just add 10% if you're trying to work it out. And uh, US dollars, of course. How's the soundtrack going? Let's have a listen. No more old Paul B-17s, though. All gone. Okay, I think I'll just go back to me talking. Glen Caddam, 21, not a terrible price. Wolfburn, I'm still yet to try. And uh, oh, there's a fetter cairn from A.D. Rattray as well. Tomatin, look at that price. $89 for an 18-year-old. Hard to argue, although it does get the bottom shelf treatment. Oh, Deep is getting excited. Core range, what have we got? 85 for the Corrie Vrecken. We have an Anno coming in at, I think it was about 60 something. 69 for the, well, $70 for the Ugadal. Oh, look, we beasties. 47 plus tax. Seem to have a fair few of them there. No older Arons, I don't think. No. The Shieldig is also a total wine brand, I believe. Still in the peat side of things, Port Charlotte. Is that peated, that Bunnahaven? No. No, okay, just the regular 12. What's that? $58 for Le Jade 10. Not too bad. Okay, Lagavulin 16, $79. I think a lot of people will find that pretty good. 115 for the Lore. When we first got into whiskey, the Lore was $99 at Total Wine. That's two years ago. So it hasn't gone up terribly. That could be old stock. Oh, look, a batch 11. That was cask strength, Lafroig. Oh, I saw the spring banks go past there. Oh, remember when these were hard to buy? Look, tons of Kleinlish in there. All about $45, aren't they? Who was it that was saying this was a good one? I was almost tempted. Glad not 10. After I didn't like or... We liked it, but we didn't like the sherry version too much because that's not our thing. Um, someone said try the 10 because it's ex-bourbon. Oh, a few Kilkerrans. 12 is $70, 85 for the cask strength, but 55.7% <laughs> because the 57.1% sherry bomb has not made it to the US. Although I saw a comment in, uh, where did I see the comment? I think it was on Scotch Four Dummies. Um, Cohen, I think it was, was saying that he heard it should still be coming to the US maybe in November. There you go. Do a little bit of clear up. Let's get some Glen Scotia to the front of the shelf, eh? <laughs> this Victoriana is um, the older one, I guess. The 51.5%, was it? I think I just saw that. Not a terrible price either. Uh, that's been going up in price, but that's not the worst I've seen, certainly. Haven't had a Glen Kinchy. Don't know much about those. Where are we here? Mexico, French, I think, uh, Aussies, New Zealand. Yeah, definitely in the world, the world whiskey section. Taiwan for Kavalan, of course. They always have, the uh, Total Wine has a, an interesting Kavalan selection. Sometimes they seem to have their own Total Wine single casks, which are like um, Solists, but they're not branded as Solists. Anybody know about these Japanese whiskies? Every time I look at the Japan section, hey, okay, George Baller, <laughs> one per customer. No, no per customer. Not worth seventy dollars. Don't do it. Yeah, Japanese whiskies. Every time I look, I'm just thinking, is it Japanese? Who knows? Something sold out. What was it? The Kuroshi. Yeah, I don't. I just don't know. I just look at them confused and just think I don't know what I'm buying. And I just 
slowly back away. Obviously, if it was a Nika Yoichi or something like that, it would be easier to understand. But uh, if anyone sees anything they think is good, shout it out. They've got nice Japanese looking labels, though, haven't they? Eh? Totally convincing. All right. I think India would be a safer bet, although certainly not uh, at the cheap end. Double cask and Port Nova. Amrut does have a good reputation, though, doesn't it? Overall, people are generally impressed, I think, with Amrut. I guess they would need to be at these prices, though, so... Oh, <laughs> see my little grabbing hand going in for the cask strength there. What is it? It is 61.8 ABV. That's uh, pretty punchy. I was going to say it's probably quite young. And, of course, it's going to be young because it's India baking away there. Right, a couple of other Japanese-ish whiskies, <laughs> Japanese-looking whiskies. Oh, some Paul Johns as well. Fair enough. What is that? A premium grain whiskey. Fifteen dollars. Well, certainly cheap. Deepa hasn't put anything in her bags yet. That's good. Hey, is we beastie? Uh, no, Roy was singing its praises recently. I've never heard of Black Dog Black Reserve. Anyone? Oh, that's not bad, is it? $50 on the Pete Monster. No Name 2. We have the No Name 1, and it's lovely. And now one of these... Um, yeah, here it is, I think. Single Marrying Cask. You probably can't quite read that. It was 49%, and that is a great bottle for $55. It's a total wine labeled one, but if you see these specials in different stores that are 49% uh, worth a go. Hard to complain about that. $48 for good old green label, blended malt. Okay, now we're in the, in the uh, blended section. How's our background? Anything good? All right, just crossing to this side then. No music. Maybe we'll go live, listen in, see what I've got to say live for a bit. Well, apparently I'm not saying very much. Never mind. Red Breast 12. No longer cask strength, but I think this is the end of the 12 year as well, isn't it? Is it not going away to a, a no age statement? I think it probably is. Again, like Japanese whiskey, I'm a little lost on the Irish whiskey, which is, uh, you know, I should know better being born in Belfast. But anyway, uh, Green Spots, obviously, well-known brand. These are the wine specials, $90 each and um, standard. I think there's a yellow spot as well. There you go. So not too pricey. Powers? Never had a Powers, I don't think. Ooh, 18 year old Jameson. Fair enough. I have to say, Total Wine does have an oppress <laughs> oppressive, maybe it is oppressive to small, uh, small shops, but it does have an impressive range, you know, because we all need our cold brew Irish whiskey, don't we? But um, the prices, if they have what you like, the prices are pretty good. Uh, a fine selection of flavoured whiskies. There you go. But considering how much Scottish whisky they're able to get their hands on, uh, it is pretty good. Well, I'm going to go quiet because I have no idea what to say. Now, Wiser's 18-year-old. <laughs> okay. Fireball. You know, I don't think I've ever tasted Fireball. I think a lot of people would say that I'm lucky for that, but uh, who knows? I know at some point along here, I was being asked to, uh, I was asked, being asked about the camera, so I'll have to try and catch that. Okay, American section. This is uh, San Jose, just down the road from where we are, um, 
near San Francisco, of course. Tenth Street is a very small little distillery. Colorado, of course, for Stranahan's. Not too bad a selection there. Oh, I see Mellow Corn. I missed that when I was actually in. I've only just caught it now on the, the video. Westward. Cali. There are tons of names here. I just look at them and think, I have no idea. There's a Westland as well. I think a lot of uh, a lot of you American whiskey experts will know a lot more. Well, okay, Glyph. You want some manufactured fake whiskey? <laughs> well, we're a long way from Texas, but there you go. Look, a fine selection of Balcones. Actually, they have. Uh, who was it was telling me to try Mirador? Because I was complaining about the uh, Balcones that I've tried have been so like shouty and loud and like chewing on burnt sticks and things. Um, someone said, try the Mirador. Del back is Arizona, is it not? I think, yep. Yeah. See High West lurking down there and a bunch of other stuff. How are these prices compared to other parts of the US? Mictors for 44. What is that? Was that straight rye? I think so. Lot 40 Canadian, right? Not the cask strength, of course, but just $35. Uh, certainly cheaper than the opposite. What's that peerless? 105. Isn't that only a three-year-old whiskey? <laughs> For some reason, that jumps out as being something slightly hyped or special. That peerless. I think people do say it's good. Maybe. Uh, some Basil Hayden's. Fair enough. Sorry, say again? You mind if I ask if you got the recording? Ah, just looking at all the bottles. Oh, okay. I stick it up on YouTube, people like to browse the store. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, at least someone can enjoy it. Single barrel rye coming in at 43. I wonder what the total, the total bottle count and uh, budget is on the total wine shelves here. Everyone says Wild Turkey 101 is a good one for the price, don't they? Again, another one I have not tried. We've got Russell. No. Russell's Reserve has been a favourite of uh, many people in the comments, in the chat. Oh, Balcones gets a, a double, double shelf space. But they're the same ones, I think, aren't they? Just, I don't know. They're, I guess they're representing them in, as a little collection there. Yeah, see, total wine, I guess a lot of people get their own barrels, don't they? Lots of stores. You do get get total wine specials. Barrel select, single cask. Uh, I probably should have picked that up, shouldn't I? And look to see which, which uh, I was going to say warehouse, rickhouse uh, it came from, but I did not. I see $50, $50, 45 Pretty good prices, I think, for Old Forester, and they always seem to have plenty of supply. Ah, another favourite of the whiskey nerdum, some Iron Root. How are those prices? Another Texas whiskey, right? Garrison Brothers, Texas as well. I see a star on the bottle. <laughs> that's, that's why I'm kind of saying that. It is a Texas whiskey. Fair enough. Are you videotaping all of our stuff? Every bottle. Everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Every bottle in the store. Oh, fun. Why are you doing that? I have a little whiskey channel and people love to go browsing. Oh. So uh, I do a little tour every now and then. Ah, fun. Okay, I think we're at the end of it. So, there you go. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll pick up those bottles for Scott.
We've run into a little translation problem with Blair Athol. Blair Athol? Blair Athol. Blair Athol. <laughs> a successful trip. Successful in that I didn't buy anything, <laughs> but got stuff for Scott. I was almost tempted by that Highland Park full volume though. Ex-bourbon only? Hmm. 